Hi everyone and thank you for joining another session of H&P Tech Webinars project. It's really is important for us uh, to show and uh, expand our uh, reach uh, among entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you very much our sponsors, Misty MIT Israel, Mobixon, Birtek, Big and YAC. Uh, our guest speaker for tonight is Yaniv Koren. He's going to tell us all about gamification and why as entrepreneurs we should use it in our uh, apps and uh, other products, web products. And that's it. Um, enjoy. Let's do it. Let's go. Um, so hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Yaniv Korem and we're going to talk about gamification today. Um, which is really a hot topic these days, not as, as hot as it was in 2010 um, when it sort of picked up, but, um, but still relatively very um, hot. Um, a little bit about myself, um, some of the places I've been. Um, so I started at the Technion. Um, I've uh, got a bachelor in architecture and uh, urban planning. So um, I'm an architect by training and education. I don't, do, I don't practice architecture anymore, but uh, that's what I studied. Um, from there, I continued to MIT. I did a double master's in um, uh, architecture and computer science. Got really uh, interested in technology and technology and people. And, um, and from there, I continued to um, IBM Research. Um, joined IBM Research in 2010. Uh, a small group here in Haifa called the Social Technologies Group. And within that group, I led the um, uh, work on um, human computation games, uh, which is this combination of crowdsourcing and gamification. And we were using gamification, we were using game-based strategies to kind of motivate people to perform certain crowdsourcing tasks, right, within the enterprise. Um, so the idea was that if you can get enough people to do something for you within the enterprise, you can solve very difficult problems. Um, in 2013, I left IBM Research and went back to, um, to MIT uh, to start a PhD at the Media Lab. Um, but then after a year, I discovered that I really didn't want to do a PhD and I didn't want to be at the Media Lab. Uh, so I sort of quit. I didn't sort of quit, I quit <laughs> and I uh, came back to Israel, but during that year I got a really wonderful chance to be part of Mass Challenge, uh, be a mentor in Mass Challenge and work with um, a lot of uh, wonderful startups. Um, beginning of 2014 I came back to Israel and started Playful Labs, which is what I do today. I am the CEO of Playful Labs. Um, we do gamification, we do gameful design, we work with a lot of startups, um, small companies, big companies, um, to use these strategies, these game-based strategies to drive um, engagement. Um, so that's a little bit about um, who I am and where I've been. And uh, let's just dive in. Let's go. Let's go. Um, the game plan for the day. Uh, since we're going to be talking about gamification, the game plan is very simple. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the why, why it's important for you to know about gamification. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the engagement crisis. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about the what, the background, what is gamification, where it started, uh, where it is today. Uh, who I'm going to give you a bunch of examples um, from uh, very successful gamification projects. Um, then we're going to talk about the how, um, two flavors to the how, the do-it-yourself, if you wanted to build a gamification solution, how would you do that? Or um, on the other hand, if you wanted to use a, a ready-made, out-of-the-box platform, how would you do that? And we'll wrap up with some uh, next steps and where to go from here. So, in case you didn't know, we are in the midst of a crisis Okay, it's an engagement crisis. Um, that's partially because um, while technology has given us uh, a lot of great things, you know, the iPhone, smartphones, uh, social networks, this um, ultra connectedness to everything and everyone, and soon, uh, soon enough, uh, self-driving cars. Right? Technology is great, but it has also created a lot of disengagement. 
Yes. Okay, and this is from a recent campaign on the topic, uh, you know, that sort of speaks for itself. This dad, instead of, you know, connecting with his son over uh, breakfast, is busy, busy watching uh, some YouTube video on his smartphone and, and becoming disengaged, right, from the important things. And, and more critically, uh, you know, these things that are, are vital to our survival uh, as a human species, um, you know, people are more interested in their, um, you know, chat or WhatsApp or whatever before they go to sleep and as soon as they wake up. Actually, a lot of research has shown that the first thing that people yeah. do in the morning Cook is, out. yeah, right, <laughs> right. You reach out for your phone. Yeah. That's the first thing that you do. And, 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 um, and it's probably the first or the last thing that you do before you go to bed. So there's a lot of disengagement uh, that comes from technology. And uh, one of the places, one of the main places that we see that happening is in the workplace. Okay. And this is uh, just one of many uh, studies that's been done recently. This one is by um, Dale Carnegie Training. Uh, where they looked at employment engagement and they define employee and they define employee engagement as the emotional and functional commitment an employee has to his or her organization, right? So it's how much the employee um, um, you know sees himself or herself as part of the organization, and it turns out that um, there is a real um, there is a real crisis here. There is uh, a lot of disengagement going on. So if you look at the numbers on the right side, um, just 29% of the workforce is considered engaged, okay? Uh, and and this, these are optimistic um, uh, predictions. Uh, I've seen studies that show much lower numbers, like 13, okay? Um, if you look at the other numbers, um, uh, nearly half of the workforce is not engaged and more than a quarter is actively disengaged, okay? And, and this, is, this is a reason to be worried because these are people who are actively sabotaging your organization, okay? Uh, they're actively disengaged. They don't really care about what, you, what it is that you're trying to do. And on the left side, uh, you can actually some, see some numbers and how those, uh, this disengagement uh, manifests itself, okay? Uh, we're talking um, a lot of money that's being uh, lost here. Another, um, you know, an industry, if you will, uh, that uh, suffers today from disengagement is the education industry. And uh, you can see that 1.2 million students, um, you know, drop out every year out of school. And uh, that translates to about 7,000 every day, which is one every 26 seconds. That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot of disengaged um, teens dropping out of school and on the right side you know it's kind of uh, funny that um, <clears throat> the united states ranks 12th among um, <clears throat> countries for percentage of adults 25 to 34 um, with college disease which is worse than new zealand right and, and you know if you think about the united states and new zealand and, you know what's up with that um, so this is this is a, a, a cause for concern and um, and when we look at uh, another industry, right? If we looked at the workplace and, and education, meanwhile in a different industry, uh, we see a very uh, different thing happening. These are customers from this other industry, and you can tell by the expression on their faces that they're engaged, right? Um, they must they they, they you know and the, the guy on the left you know is is a little angry, perhaps, a little frustrated. The person in the middle is uh, in some, some, you know, some kind of amazement on his face and um, amazement and amusement, uh, but nonetheless, they are very engaged. And this industry, of course, is the gaming industry, okay? And I've put together um, uh, some infographics uh, that show the sort of uh, really hardcore engagement that's happening in this industry. Um, just to pick a few, um, you can see that 42% of Americans uh, today play video games at least three hours per week. That's a lot, okay? Some play more than that, most play more than that. That's why everybody go back to the VR. Right, 
Right. So they're, they're gonna, I think it's going to be much higher. So exactly. So Oculus Rift and, the, and exactly. Right. The entire VR industry is is very hot today. It's a very hot topic in all the game uh, 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 industry conferences um, because it's a way of creating a more seamless experience for for gamers with reality. Um, some other numbers that um, you know are kind of surprising. The average. Um, age of a player is, is 35 so we're not talking about teenagers we, we're talking about grown-ups right who work um, a full um, you know full-time 40 hours a, w a week sorry and then go off um, home and play another 20 hours a week you know a part-time job um, on their video games um, you can see that 40 uh, 54 percent of players play multiplayer games so it's it's it, it's very social, right? It's about connecting with other people. So this gaming industry is sort of enjoying um, a surge in engagement and, and social interaction. And, and we sort of ask ourselves why. Why, this, why is this happening? Um, why is this happening here and not in other industries such as the uh, uh, workplace and, uh, and the education? And I've given you here just five takeaways of why I think this is happening. And of course, there, there are many others. Um, so the five takeaways are fun. Okay, First and foremost, games are fun. And not just one kind of fun, there are different kinds of fun. Okay, So it's easy fun, it's hard fun, it's puzzles, it's social, it's serious. It's different kinds of fun. There's fun for every type of person. Okay, They're safe. They're... they're safe to try and fail okay there are no consequences to what happens and you can always restart so once the game is over you can just restart the game in a game you get a lot of feedback which is something that's really missing in in our everyday life right we are we crave feedback in everything that we do uh and, and, and games give you that so you know i'm, I'm recording this webinar with you and I'm not seeing like f plus five, you know, skill level, yeah. plus one experience level. I'm getting, you know, no feedback. But in the game world, you're getting constant feedback. You always know where you are, right, and where you're going. Right, you can always level up. So there's constant feedback, and we need that. You also, you know, you mentioned rewards. We get rewards in games all the time. We don't get them in, in real life uh, as much, right? So um, that's another thing. And they reinforce good habits, right? They create these sort of habit loops, right? And help us create uh, better habits. Um, and, and the last takeaway is flow, uh, which is this theory by um, Hungarian psychologist uh, Csikszentmihalyi, Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, um, who talks about games as this sort of optimal experience or uh, machines of optimal experience and why is that because games um, always challenge you um, you know always keep you at the end of your ability okay always find the appropriate challenge for you so the challenge that games give you are always um, you know they're never too hard and they're never too easy if they were too hard They'd be frustrating right you would never try them if they were too easy you'd be bored and you'd walk away so games always keep you in this sort of flow state in this funnel between very difficult and very easy that's tailored to your skill level okay and again these are only five takeaways there are plenty more so again the question here is how can we leverage everything that's good about games to help solve real world problems this is in a sense the the question that I'm trying to answer with Playful Labs. And I sort of look at this as, I call this, you know, this is where gamification comes in. I call this the sushi model of gamification. So your workplace, your education curriculum, all these things are your white bland rice, right? That nobody wants to eat. But then as soon as you wrap it in seaweed and add some fish, okay, and some vegetables and some sauces, suddenly it gets a lot of flavor and that's gamification okay just to put it in in context
So let's talk about um, uh, the background to gamification. <clears throat> where did it come from? Where did it start? Um, turns out the gamification, the term itself was coined uh, way back in 2002, 2003, uh, by this guy called Nick Pelling. And uh, Nick Pelling at the time uh, was, uh, was an unsuccessful game designer, um, if you will. Um, some of his uh, game projects were being canceled. He was being sued by this large game, uh, game publisher. He wasn't doing very well. And at some point he said, you know, the hell with it, left everything and went back to, uh, to get an MBA. Right? He thought, I'm gonna go and get an MBA and clear my mind and then think about the next thing. And as he was doing his MBA, he came up with this idea, which he called gamification, which was applying game-like accelerated user interface design to make electronic transactions both enjoyable and, and fast. What does that mean? So he was um, looking at all these um, game user interfaces that he was designing and these user interfaces were made to be engaging, were made uh, to get people to press buttons, right? To move sliders, to, to engage, to touch, to do something. And then he was looking at all these um, electronic devices, electronic transaction devices like ATMs, like vending machines, right? All these things that are extremely boring, right? And very, very tedious. Good. Very good. Right, very great and hard to use, right? Not very compelling, very slow. You, you, uh, many times you, you walk to an ATM and you see some, some person with a bewildered face, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out how do I work this thing? And this is a really simple machine, but yet, you know, people struggle with it. So he thought, okay, here's an idea. Why don't we use the same tactics for creating these engaging gaming interfaces for these really boring gray, you know, uh, electronic transaction machines. And so he came up with this idea of gamification and he hated the word, but he said, okay, I know this, this word is gonna stick, right? There's something in the word that's gonna stick. And so he started his consulting company called uh, Conundrum. Uh, in 2004, I think, um, it ran for a couple of years and it was a complete failure. Like his games, it didn't take off. And, uh, you know, the world, I guess, was not ready for gamification. Uh, he closed Conundra and um, the world forgot about gamification until 2010. And then all of a sudden, if you look at Google Trends, you'll see that in 2010, there's like a huge surge in searches, you know, regarding gamification. And what happened in 2010? Um, there are a lot of assumptions. I'm gonna give you uh, my take on it, which I think is, uh, has to do with three main things. One is the demogra demographic shift, right? Generation Y, the millennials. Um, in 2010, uh, many of these um, uh, teenagers from the, uh, late 80s beginning 90s uh, started moving into the workforce and these are people who grew up on you know games on internet on dynamic uh, multitasking environments and then they find themselves going into the workplace and finding a very different environment okay and that created a big sort of shift in the workplace people are starting started hopping from one job to another looking for the right place that sort of create a big ripple effect in in the um, uh, in the industry, and and that was a lot to do with games. So they were looking for environments that were more like game or game like. Okay, that's the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was technology. So Facebook matured. We had Twitter. We had you know all these uh, new social services, and. A lot of companies were starting to build games on top of that, especially Facebook. So Zynga came into the uh, picture with all these very casual social games like Farmville and uh, Restaurant Wars and Mafia Wars and all these uh, sort of things that no one anticipated were going to be successful, right? The gaming industry thought they were crap and they were going to disappear as and fast as they... Nobody got going to pay us so much. Right, <laughs> and, and no way they're gonna, gonna turn a profit, right? No way. But, you know, they proved otherwise and, and Zynga became hugely successful 
and this whole gaming industry was built on this like you know social connectedness that you can play with anyone anywhere in the world anytime that you want all right so that's the second thing that happened that really uh boosts this uh this idea of games and gamification and the third thing that happened um relates to the response to what happened with zynga uh in the gaming industry and namely two things that happened two very famous talks well now famous talks one is jane mcgonagall um, they gave a talk at TED in 2010, and the other one is Jesse Shell, who gave a talk, a keynote at DICE in 2010. And these are two very um, um, famous, well-regarded uh, game designers that spoke about games and gamification and their effect on society. Jane McGonagall talked about games and how they can create a better society and how we can use games to improve um, real world. Uh, or solve real world problems, and Jesse Shell painted um, um, a very interesting, I would say interesting, to put it mildly, uh, vision of what gamification will look like in, in a couple of years, which is this environment that's, you know, the Internet of Things, where we have a lot of sensors, and they pick up whatever we do, and there is the gamification application that rewards us for anything that the sensor network you know, um, uh, picks up as an activity. So to give you an example, you uh, wake up in the morning, you uh, go to your uh, bathroom, you start brushing your teeth, the sensors uh, recognize that you're brushing your teeth, and then this gamification um, system pops up and says, hey, plus five points for brushing your teeth, you know, three times in a row this week. Good job, right? So this is the sort of vision that he was painting, but, um, more than anything, it really helped to solidify uh, the term gamification in, in public opinion, for, for better or for worse. Um, we are coming from it. We are uh, not uh, in the Internet of Things. It's yeah. It's, yeah, it's coming. It's, 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 already, it's already here. Yeah. It's already here, and I'm going to show you a couple of oh, examples sure. uh, <laughs> where, you can, we, where you can see this um, vision manifest oh, itself, yeah. for, for, for real. Um, and, and so it brings us to where we are today, which is my view of gamification and the sort of two main disciplines uh, that, that, that rule, okay, this, this field of gamification. Um, one view or one discipline of gamification is gamification as a loyalty program. And then this is something that we know and, and are familiar with loyalty programs, you know, the frequent flyer miles, the American Express cards, the different coupons. These have been around for ages. The problem is that they suck, right? We all enroll with the, in them, use them, and then forget about them. But they're still there because brands feel comfortable knowing that you have something that belongs to them that sort of ties you to their product, to their brand, right? But in reality, they don't work. As soon as a competitive offer comes up, we'll just go with the competitor. So gamification builds on that to incorporate other things, um, other game mechanics, such as um, different rewards, such as different levels, status, access um, to different content, to new content, uh, social relatedness, all these new game mechanics to enhance these loyalty programs. Okay, so one way of looking at gamification and probably the most popular today is as an enhanced type of loyalty program, which also takes, um, uh, also leverages big data, right? So all these companies are collecting a lot of data about people. And so gamification knows how to take this data and build on that, right? React to it in real time. So you did something, you get feedback, gamified feedback in real time. You did this, you get this reward. Whereas in, in previous um, occasions in loyalty programs, you know, you came in, it was very passive. You came into the shop, you swiped your card, you were a loyal member, or you were part of a club, you got the discount or you didn't get the discount, and then you wait, went home, okay? It wasn't tailored to you. It wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't active. It wasn't activating you, all right? And... An example of 
this sort of view of gamification is a lot of the program is what Starbucks did uh, with their My Rewards program. So they've integrated, uh, you know, this is sort of their enhanced loyalty program, their gamified uh, program there. They incorporated different game mechanics levels. So you can see you've got a, you're a gold level, right? As opposed to like, I don't know, silver or bronze level. So you progress in levels that gives you um, a unique status you know, some bragging rights because it's also connected to a social network. So everyone knows that you're a gold level. Um, they've incorporated collections. So you have to do certain things and collect certain things in order to get um, uh, new rewards or unlock um, um, certain things. Um, you get a lot of feedback about how many uh, cups of coffee you've, you, you drank and, and how you're doing in this sort of gamified experience, the look and feel is very is very gamey with the stars and everything. And they've also incorporated their own currency, right? So the stars are part of the gamified currency that translates into real currency, you know, money, uh, etc. cetera, um, you know, Starbucks products and things like that, okay? So, so that's one view, the loyalty program type of view. The other view of gamification, the other discipline, is gamification as an experience or gameful design and this view this discipline looks at the world of user experience and game design and the sort of interaction between them and that's where it, that's where it lives okay um, in that place um, it's much more focused about the uh, the experience creating an experience that's more game like okay um, an example of that is um, this application called uh, Zombies Run or Zombies Run okay, with an exclamation mark. Um, as we know, uh, Americans are fascinated with zombies for, for some reason. Um, there are many, many, many movies about uh, zombies. Uh, and this application builds on that to create um, a running application. So this is like RunKeeper, okay? Um, but it takes this activity of running, which is very, you know, for most people, it's, it's kind of boring to run, okay? And ties it nicely into a narrative, gives it context, all right? So it has all the different game mechanics that the Starbucks e experience or loyalty program had, the levels, the feedback, the look and feel and everything, but it also had adds two different things, the context, the narrative, okay? It tells a story, you're not just running, you're running away from zombies who are chasing you. Okay, you're running in a uh, zombie-infected area from point A to point B, and you have to not get eaten by zombies. Okay, that's the narrative, and it also creates a very interesting connection between the real world and the game world. Okay, so this activity that you're doing physically running is translated into the running within the game for uh, experience. So that's nice. That's a nice direction um, to think about for gamification. Um, and, and why does it work? Why, why is this very compelling? Um, the sort of thinking about uh, games as an experience. And I, and I took this slide from a TED talk I, I saw recently uh, by this guy who is a uh, memory Olympian. Turns out that there's a, a, an Olympics for memory, right? So people memorize stuff and then compete against each other who memorizes uh, best. So one of the uh, tricks that they use, one of the exercises they use is trying to memorize a deck of cards. So if you look at a deck of cards and there are 52 uh, cards in the deck, it's really hard to memorize the order of the cards, okay? But then a trick he teaches during his talk is to try and think about games, uh, uh, try to think about cards this way, right? to add sort of a fun element, a gameful element, an experience to the cards, right? And as soon as you do that, you're able to more easily, more quickly memorize the deck. And the reason why that is, is because our brain is wired to, to love fun, to look for fun, to look for things that are different, to look for things that engage, okay? And that's why gameful design and gamification as a whole um, works. It just works. 
So I'm going to give you a few examples from uh, a few uh, uh, different um, areas or industries, and we're going to start with uh, trying to gamify location, right? Location-based application. And um, what uh, what really is sort of still considered, I think, the poster child for gamification is Foursquare. It started as Dodgeball, uh, which was acquired by uh, Google, and then the founders started Foursquare, and really through Foursquare introduced this these gamified mechanics, the notion of gamification, uh, mainly through badges. Okay, they had a lot of badges for... Oh, for being a mayor. For, right, and then status, and then mayorship which was this, uh, so if you went in, so if you don't know Foursquare, it's a service where you walk into certain establishments and all you do is just check in. You say, I'm here, I'm in this Starbucks, okay? Um, and for that, you get rewarded. You get points and you get, uh, you get status. So if you visit a place more than any other player in Foursquare, okay, you become mayor. That's really powerful, okay? Um, in many cases, it doesn't give you any special privileges <laughs> other than bragging rights, saying, you know, I'm the mayor of this yeah. Starbucks. <laughs> but some places did yeah. sort of... Um, Gamification a little bit. Yeah, some places that did try to uh, associate certain rewards, like... Yeah, uh, the mayor, you get a shot. Right, you get a shot, you get another extra foam on your coffee or yeah. whatever. Um, but, uh, but through these game mechanics, um, they were they were able to take um, something that they've already done with dodgeball this location based check-in service which is if you think about it, it's very it's very boring right you walk into a place and you check in you know, so what but then as soon as you add this gamified layer you add engagement right so people are always looking your friends are looking to see what have you done where have you checked into so I'm going to check into this place because I want to be the mayor I'm going to I want to overthrow you as the mayor so you know I created all this competition and you know in this slide I sort of try to outline some of the main gamification um, elements in their now I think old interface it's, it's changed since the screenshot but you can see that you know they had personalization they had your picture your your, your details um, the language when you checked in was very personalized you know welcome to blah 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 um, you know they had a social connection your network they had secrets right tips special tips okay and uh, and if you were the mayor you could uh, you know vote on on tips you had certain privileges within the within the system um, a lot of room for self-expression through photos through lists that you create and you could share with other people um, gifting right so um, they give the um, the proprietor the option to give you a gift for visiting the place um, access if you do certain things you unlock access to special features and um, the sense of exploration and adventure right through searching in the map right so you see this map and you want to explore you see the places you see your friends they've been places it, it's, it, it sort of uh, compels you to want to go on an adventure, all right? Uh, so this was Foursquare. Um, kind of a different take on Foursquare was Scavenger by uh, Seth Prebatch. Um, and I think it, they were acquired or funded through Google Ventures, I think. Um, very similar to, to Foursquare, but what they did in Scavenger um, was add challenges. So it's sort of a very uh, proactive version of Foursquare. So in Foursquare, if you were passive and you just had to check in, Scavenger gave you, cha gave you challenges, really turned it into a game. So they would tell you, you know, there is a burrito place right around this corner. So go over there, you know, not, don't just check in, but, you know, go in, order this burrito, take the napkin, fold it uh, into a crane, right, origami crane, take a picture, upload it, and get another burrito for free. Okay, so there were all these challenges that were meant to engage you as a customer. And they did a couple of very successful, big, huge campaigns. Uh, one was with Coca-Cola <coughs> during, um, during Black Friday uh, in a few of the major malls in the United States. 
Uh, I think one of the challenges was that you had to run around the mall as you were, the, you know, doing your shopping. You were crazy, um, and when, whenever you saw someone holding a can or a bottle of Coca-Cola, you had to take a picture of, your, of the two of you high-fiving each other <laughs> and upload that and get I don't know it says uh, earn a nine dollar gift card and so you get more you know money to do more shopping during Black Friday um, so that's sort of a different take on game fine uh, location based services um, <clears throat> many examples in the well-being space I'm just going to give you again two um, uh, very good very uh, popular examples uh, one is Night Plus, um, which again, similar to Zombies Run, um, took a much more conservative approach to uh, gamifying the running experience. But nevertheless, um, that's what they've done. You can see that they've added goals, they've added challenges. Um, you know, um, they, they want to turn it into a game, a competition. They give you a coach. It becomes a team effort. You're competing against other runners. There's a social network. So, you know, it's a whole gamified experience. It's not a game, okay? Um, um, you know, Zombies Run was more, more game-like, but this is a gamified experience. They've taken a lot of the game mechanics and incorporated it into their application in order to get people to run, okay? Um, They've also added wearables, you know, they've had this uh, fuel wristband that, um, you know, if you think about the game world where you're collecting certain, certain artifacts, right? So you have the special sword and, you know, um, you buy this, uh, this special spell and things like that. So, you know, they've added this wristband, so it gives you special powers, right? You're able to collect Nike plus fuel, which again translates into points and game currency which then you can translate into real products, okay? Um, so that's Nike Plus. Um, you know, you mentioned, uh, Kobe, uh, this vision of, you know, this Internet of Things. This is sort of, you know, going in that direction. Um, Nike Plus and, and this application called uh, Smokebeat, uh, which I still, I'm, I'm not, you know, 100% sure what to think about it. I kind of like it, but at the same at the same time, it, I, I don't know. I think it's it's a little problematic. Uh, what it does is it tries to help you quit smoking, and the way it does that is it links to your wearable, to your wearable watch, and it tracks your hand movement. Okay, it tracks so your hand movement. So you can't eat or you can't smoke. Right, and it knows and it has some sophisticated algorithms that can uh, recognize when you're eating drinking or smoking or doing something else okay and as soon as it recognizes that you're smoking it you know activates this application which shows you okay this is cigarette number two that you're smoking today um, you know it shows you uh, a whole histogram of uh, how much you smoked over a day over a week over a month um, it gives you different challenges okay quit smoking now and you know don't break the sequence and, and, and etc. So, like, I'm not sure what to think about it. Um, I think what it's trying to do, it's trying to break your um, habit loop, right? So, um, you had uh, Eyal Nero on the program and he talks about Atari, right? Um, I like to think about it. I have a different acronym for it. I call it the care cycle, which is Q, action, reward, and expectation. So you get a cue that triggers an action, right? And then you get a reward for that. And if that happens enough times, you start building an expectation, okay? And that completes the cycle. That hooks you on a habit. What this is trying to do, I think, is using gamification to break that cycle. So as soon as it recognizes that you've triggered into the habit and you're performing this bad habit, okay, this bad action, it's trying to cut that off and, you know, just sort of, um, you know, move your attention, your awareness to, to what's happening so you, so you quit. And if you do that enough times, I'm assuming it will break the cycle and you would stop smoking. So that's still in pilot mode, but it's going, uh, it's going pretty well. I've spoken to the, uh, to the founder and, um, and it's an interesting example. 
Um, let's talk about the holy grail of gamification, which is sales. Now, sales, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of shooting fish in a barrel type of thing for gamification because in sales, salespeople are intrinsically motivated to play games. Like when you're selling, that's what they do. They play games, right? They play games with others, with other salespeople. They're always, always competing with other salespeople. And they see this whole interaction with you know, a, prospective, a prospective client or a prospective sale as a game for or a gamified interaction. So um, a lot of very good example um, happened in sales. I'm just going to, again, give you uh, two examples. Um, one is a platform called Fantasy Sales Team. Um, I think relatively new and somewhat successful, um, which tries to really take uh, sales and turn it into a game. Okay? It's using the team metaphor, right? Uh, the sports team metaphor uh, to drive uh, salespeople to make more sales. Okay, so in this platform, you can choose for your sales teams different sports. Uh, to play so you can be a baseball team you can do race uh, uh, car racing you can do baseball you can do football you can do all sorts of uh, uh, sports but the idea here is that uh, the way um, sales um, team were, were, were motivated were trying to motivate their their people to make more sales up until now was to create competition and what would happen was that you'd have one or two salespeople who are like the aces, right? Who would fly through the sales, would make tons of sales, you know, move ahead of everyone else and then leave everyone way behind. And what would happen, all the people, all the salespeople left behind would just give up on the game. So you only expose the one or two best salespeople and not use your entire uh, sales force. Uh, what this is trying to do is engage the entire team. So the only way to win in these games is by, you know, cooperating, by having the entire team work together and win as a team. Of course, you know, you have your individual accomplishments, but it is your responsibility to help your, you know, your, the weaker parts of your sales team, you know, move forward and be successful. Um, so, so that's that's what what uh, that's sort of the sort of game mechanics that it's bringing in into the um, sales industry. Um, another example, and, and one of my favorite, is uh, this. I think they're Austrian. This Epunt, um, the Lego, the Lego House experiment. I would call this an experiment more than anything. This is, uh, and, and and I like this example because it didn't use any technology. It was just people thinking creatively. Um, people who are very um, game oriented. Thought about you know using game thinking to drive uh, uh, or to solve a business problem. And their problem was um, this is a recruiting company. They wanted their salespeople to get more potential candidates, right? So what they did was turn it into a competition where for every call, appointment, or close deal that you made, you get a certain Lego piece, okay? So if you made a call, you can see you get a Lego piece with eight dots or eight spaces. An appointment is worth a Lego piece with 16 dots and a close uh, deal is worth 24 dots, etc., etc. okay? And, for, and, and, and the more you made of these, the more Lego pieces you got. And at the end, you had to take all these Lego pieces and build a house, okay? And the person with the best-looking house would win the competition, right? And this was a company vote, of course, so it, it involved everyone in the company. And it's nice because it was also creative, right? People would get to build their own Lego pieces. Everyone loves building, uh, you know, with Lego pieces. You also had something to show. You had an object that you could put in the office on your desk. Here, look, you know, I made this, and it shows then I'm a top salesperson, right? Because I made this Lego house, okay? And it's also a way of translating, I think a very nice and compelling way of translating uh, 
uh, a sale into something you know game like something that is very it's very physical it's very physical it's very known it's very popular it's very tangible to all of us this lego piece right uh, so this was a nice example you could see some of the results of the number of lego pieces that they've distributed yeah, yeah. Um, they've made 300 more than 300 calls wow. 90 appointments 74 deals were were closed and this ran over a period of five months only five months if wow. I'm not, not mistaken so it really engaged the entire company um, and was also a very um, a successful PR stunt right it got them a lot of PR and um, brings us to this this um, question of implementation right so if uh, you know if you wanted to start working with gamification if you were the owner of a, a, a startup or a company and you wanted to leverage gamification how would you do that um, so I'm going to try to give you a very simple kind of hands-on recipe uh, to how uh, to use gamification um, and there are really two flavors right so there's option a which is a do-it-yourself type of thing um, and you know if you're a startup this might make sense right because you don't have a lot of money to invest in uh, a huge solution a big brand a big platform for education HR and everything like that so you build it yourself right you, you bootstrap it uh, so this is the sort of do-it-yourself uh, type of thing um, there are many many different things to think about when you want to do um, gamification yourself but the two main things that you want to focus on is the, your team and the gamification engine. These are the two most important components of a successful gamification uh, uh, do-it-yourself project. Uh, in terms of the team, you want to make sure you've got a product manager, UI, UX. Most startups sort of combine these two together, uh, right? So the product also does a little bit of UI, UX, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess, you know, uh, uh, that's that's what happens and of course a developer and I would recommend a gamification expert uh, or try to grow uh, one of these roles into a gamification an in-house gamification expert which today is not uh, extremely difficult because you got, you got a lot of resources right you go on Google type gamification get a lot of videos courses uh, lectures. There's a Coursera by a colleague of mine, Kevin Verbach. Yeah, I I you you took that? Yeah, hugely, hugely successful. I know Kevin very well. Uh, he's awesome. And he's, been, he's been in Israel. He's been in yeah. I brought him to Israel, him. right? And and, and, and uh, we organized a, a workshop for him. Um, so and I'm still working with him at Wharton, and uh, it's a really great course. He's he's a terrific guy. Um, and you've got a lot of others, but it's not too difficult to get into gamification now and, uh, and, and sort of figure out what's, what's going on and uh, what works and what doesn't. And, um, and it's, it's important for you to have the, the product manager that's going to look at the strategy aspects of gamification and the UI UX person who's going to look at the user experience aspects of gamification okay and they're very different so if there's one person who's doing both you know he has to combine these two uh, somehow <clears throat> sorry um, and if you don't want to do it yourself then get a gamification expert uh, externally uh, who would come and mentor your team and the gamification really crucial um, it's sort of the uh, you know it's a, the, the bread of and butter of uh, your gamification experience if it's trivial if it's very simple it's too simple it won't work it won't create the engagement a gamification en uh, essentially uh, gamification engine essentially is a rule-based decision uh, making system you've got events from users coming in you've got some sort of logic going on inside the uh, this sort of black box this engine and a response coming out the other end and uh, what this engine does it is, is it maps different user actions and events to certain outcomes so if this mapping is too one-to-one -to -one, too trivial the engagement is gonna suck and um, the project will be a failure so it has to have some complexity in it um, 
We're going to jump next to a platform and I'm going to show you an example of how that happens. Um, if you're going to build it yourself, look at existing platforms, look at open source platforms, look at how they've done it and try to model that to make sure it's, it's, it's robust enough. And again, option B is, um, you know, and this is becoming more and more um, popular today, is to just use a ready-made, out-of-the-box platform. Uh, why is this becoming more and more popular? Um, you know, cost-benefit, uh, costs are going uh, down, benefit is obvious. Um, tons of platforms out there, uh, big companies, small companies, who offer different solutions. Out of this whole list I've comprised, there are others, there are always new ones popping up, but um, two of them are Israeli actually, Game Effective and Captain Up, two very successful companies with um, really great uh, gamification products. A game, effect, a game Effective um, recently, I think, um, uh, got, I think, three million in funding, so they had a very successful round uh, recently. So they're moving up, Captain Up. We're gonna talk about them next. Again, very simple to integrate into uh, uh, any website. And again, there are other uh, platforms. Some of these are open source, so you might as uh, well you know, look into them and see if uh, they're an option for you. Um, I mentioned Captain Up. I wanna walk you through a very, very simple um, uh, tutorial, a few screenshots of how uh, Captain Up works, just to give you an example of how a, a gamification platform works, okay? And how easy it is to integrate it into your solution. So Captain Up works the, these days with a lot of uh, uh, gaming sites and e-commerce sites but they are always venturing into new markets and, um, and I think that because their solution is so easy to integrate, they're gonna be very uh, popular in a lot of other markets very soon. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, I would definitely keep an eye on them. Um, what Kempton Up does is, you know, as soon as you integrate their widget, their solution, they have an API into your website, into your product. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side, what they call the HUD, the heads up display, uh, which is sort of this badge that uh, gives you um, some gamified statistics about um, the level of engagement or your level of engagement with this uh, website, with this solution, okay? So, so far I've earned like 34 points on this site. I am level uh, start and I've got this uh, weird badge and I can do some sharing. But as I engage more and more with the site, I get more points, I get more badges, I get uh, different sharing options, etc. If you press this HUD, this, uh, HUD display, okay, you get this pop-up um, on your screen with three tabs, the profile, the community, and the challenges. The profile shows you uh, your um, player profile, in this case it's anonymous, it uh, shows you uh, some statistics, the number of badges, the number of points, it also shows you a progress bar to show you uh, where you stand, uh, you know, how many points you need to advance to the next stage, and uh, your feed, um, you know, what's happening in your network, what's happening in your uh, game space, currently that's empty, uh, but I'll show you an example where it's full, and some of the badges that you can earn, okay, so it's, it's sort of teasing you uh, to engage more with the sites, to get or unlock um, more badges, get more feeds, and uh, progress um, uh, on the progress bar. Uh, if you move forward, you see the community tab on the left side and the challenges tab on the right side. And now you can see that on the community side, it's full, it's showing you a leaderboard. Very important to show you who are the leaders in this community. Uh, these might be people that you know, could be complete strangers that you want to follow, you want to keep an eye on. Um, just to give you an example of why this is useful within an organization, for example, like IBM, we would use leaderboards or the results of a gamified experience with leaderboards to find or um, locate our SMEs, our subject matter experts. So the people who are leading 
in the game are usually the people who know best, right? These are the influencers. So by having them on the leaderboard, uh, it just gives you a very quick uh, access to, to a lot of uh, SMEs, a lot of subject matter experts. Um, so you have this leaderboard, you see your community feed and what's happening, and it's sort of engaging you to, you know, maybe get the secret admirer badge or the one of us badge and, and things like that. Moving on to the challenges, again, it's showing you uh, how many points you have, uh, how many you need to advance um, to the next level. It's showing you what you get points for the sort of activity. If you tweet, you get 15 points. A post on Google, po on Google Plus gets you 25 points, etc. Um, and within the challenges, you can see the home, the badges, and the level. So the different um, uh, aspects of, of challenges. Um, and these two things come in different flavors. So these are the two uh, gamification widgets. Um, and the leaderboard and the activity separate from uh, this sort of pop-up. And then you can take these and integrate it into any part of your site using a very simple um, API. And, and this is to give you a sense of what the results of your gamification engine would look like. So, you know, your gamification engine would have a function called leaderboard, which would always, you know, spit out the ranking, the very current ranking of your players. And it would always, you know, um, keep, keep uh, feeding you know, activity for your community using this activity feed. Right, so these are the sort of things that you want to think about when you're implementing your gamification solution. Uh, one thing to notice, uh, to note here, um, you know, this is sort of the gamification design aspect for leaderboards, is um, what do you show on a leaderboard? And notice that this has a drop-down menu that shows, you know, this month, right? And why is that there? It's because that when you come in into a game, you might be way behind on your points. Okay, so when you look at the leaderboard, uh, you might have like you know uh, two points, and then the person in uh, uh, who's leading the leaderboard in the first pro uh, place has like three thousand points. And so when you come into the game, you say, yourself, "I'm never going to have three thousand points," and you give up. And that's the exact opposite of what we want to have. Uh, with the leaderboard. We want the leaderboard to engage you, right? We want it to motivate you to start playing and advance in the game. So we, ha we add this sort of um, this month or this week or this day perspective that always gives you a fighting chance, right? So you're not, you might not be the overall leader in the game, but today you have a chance of leading the leaderboard, right? So this is the sort of thing uh, that you think about in terms of gamification design and uh, these ideas and, and knowledge that your team needs to have in order to create a um, successful uh, gameful experience. And to sort of summarize this, the, the main takeaways here is um, the gamification is not about turning everything uh, into a game, right? It's not. It's about taking uh, the stuff that works in games and trying to use that to fix the stuff that doesn't work in reality, right? It's using um, game thinking and game elements to create more engaging uh, products and experiences. Um, it should be, right? It's not a thing in, in itself. You think about the difference between a game and gamification. A game and a thing is a thing in itself, right? A game is an object. You play a game. There is no, uh, there is, there isn't anything other than a game. Gamification is about your content. If you take away gamification, you're left with content, right? If you take the content away, you're left with nothing. So gamification should be part of your business development UI UX strategy. It should feed into your uh, your content, your product, your experience, whatever it is that you're trying to sell. It's not for everyone. Not everything can be or should be gamified. Good example of that is Google News Badges. Okay, Google tried to gamify their news services uh, a few years back, complete and utter failure. Why? Because people who came in to read news on Google News were already intrinsically motivated to read the news. 
they didn't need you know to to, to quote the, the 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 movie no stinking badges right they didn't need any badges they came in to read news and so when there uh, there's a classic research um about um intrinsic motivation in kids and drawing right so they took uh, three groups of, of kids one group was the control group other kids uh, they gave them a reward for every drawing and the third group they gave them a reward every other time for drawing okay and they showed that the um, motivation increased in the group that got rewards from time to time because it was unexpected it came as a surprise and the group that associated the reward to drawing stopped drawing completely right engagement went down this is what happened with google badges okay as soon as you got rewarded for reading you didn't feel like reading anymore right so uh it's not for everyone you do your homework or you consult a specialist to understand your space and i'm here to tell you that gamification works it's been around since 2010 we've had five years now to test it it works you have uh compelling results um statistics uh, findings research that show that it can and does increase engagement improve training and learning and a bunch of other things but it has to be done correctly okay thank you so we'll take uh, perhaps one or two questions one question you already answered so you ruined my surprise <laughs> uh, it was how to it was how to do I uh, avoid over concentration in the gaming effect right like in my application but I guess uh, you already answered that um, so what do I what should I do next uh, let's say I want to check my project my entrepreneur like I have a startup I have an app or web application right what do I do next what do you do next uh, first and foremost again do your homework do some research there is a ton of uh, stuff about gamification out there. Try to figure out, and it's mo usually it's also uh, sort of categorized. Okay, so try to find your category uh, and, and see if there uh, have been any other um, similar projects done. And if they were successful or were failures, and try to learn from that. That's the first thing that you should do. Um, and then, uh, and we didn't talk about this um, you know the sort of uh, lean startup methodology adopt that in gamification as well don't spend a lot of time trying to build complex gamification uh, strategy into your product just try and test that right add a, a gamified feature see what happens right run the analytics is it increasing engagement is it decreasing are people you know what are people uh, thoughts about this um, uh, new feature. Is it hard to to relate to, like to, to bond with a with a with a new feature? Right. Itself? Your your customers will tell you immediately if it looks weird. So for some applications, like for Waze, this sort of stuff works. I don't know if you noticed, but they have like different voices for navigation, and they've recently incorporated Arnold Schwarzenegger's Genesis voice. <laughs> which is genius mm -hmm. i have arnold with me every single drive right like, i miss yuval Mimbulbal. the what y yuval Mimbulbal. right yeah, i right. miss it you miss yuval Mimbulbal. you're right but i mean arnold is great you know <laughs> I, I know where you're going you know <laughs> you know take a take a left here i know where you're going i'll be back and they so, put even uh, if you go in a new world new road uh, after a while they give you like right they give they you points, points like right they, they try to do more gamification right and they had this experiment when we, where they turned you into a pac-man did you see that yeah. your, your car turned yeah. into yeah. suddenly yeah. turned into a pac-man <laughs> yeah, and then you had to drive like a pac-man to eat you know the little dots That's and avoid like obstacles <laughs> and they would use that to map it's just genius use yeah. that to map different uh, routes. different routes yeah. right unexplored routes yeah. so this is a company this is a business model where gamification uh, works right it works because people have learned to expect the unexpected but um, there are other, other industries where <coughs> you know people are intrinsically motivated to do something like reading um, like consuming uh, content and things like that that you have to be very 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 careful how you uh, incorporate gamification, okay? Great. 
Sounds great. Do you have anything? Yeah, anything? Yeah, uh, big question. Like everybody now talk about the, the Slack, the the app, the yeah. app slash slash uh, web uh, application that everybody use. Right. And now it's been a big, uh, big uh, number, big, no, big, big. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, everybody like talk hype. about hype. The, the right. Very hype. Like, do you think that the, the them their own uh, gamification that helped them? achieve this goal uh, if, if slacks uh, gamification helped yeah. them achieve um, sure I mean they were very um, sophisticated in, in how they introduced um, slack I think there was um, you could say there were sort of aspects of gamification in, in that um, sort of um, in a chat. Yeah, the inner chat, the connectedness, the way of, you know, the, the way you interacted, a, a new way of interacting with your, with your team, um, this sort of play on different hashtags and things like yeah. that. So a lot of um, um, self-expression, you could create your own yeah. hashtags, um, you know, you could kind of goof off, yeah. right, in, in the way yeah. that you uh, tag your data, uh, tag your interactions, create a channel, so that sort of gives you a certain uh, status. So you had a lot of these gamification uh, uh, yeah, elements in there, which certainly uh, helped. I, overall, I think it's just a great product. Yeah. I mean, it just works. Yeah. So <laughs> and, uh, and gamification just, you know, it helped. Yeah. So, so part of the sandbox definitely should be, the sandbox of your, you know, as a uh, user, for your user experience should be to put gamification parts in it. Exactly, exactly. And it, it, also, it, it should also always augment the experience, mm -hmm. right? It shouldn't replace yeah, the experience. Yeah, make it much richer. Right, so Slack had a really good thing going on. They really thought about the user experience, but then they, you know, they enhanced it with gamification yeah. mechanics. That should be... Uh, your your thinking going into this brilliant yeah, great so uh thank you very much and thank you very much it was great uh, thank I'm you sure for having me sh right. thank you you're welcome yeah, we are sure gonna implement some of, of these uh, <laughs> tips no, yeah, for that, uh, gamify your webinar yeah <laughs> uh, perhaps from here we can go and play basketball <laughs> <laughs> sounds good <laughs> sounds good okay. okay so thank you very much our audience um uh, for being with us for another uh, webinar, H and B Tech Webinars project. We hope to see you on the next one as well. Have a lovely uh, doing whatever you do. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.